Good morning, friends, and welcome to Oasis Church right here in beautiful Athens, Ohio. I have a feeling that this morning we are going to really experience God together, even if you're isolated from one another, whether you be in your living room, in your own home, whether you're still in your bedroom, in your pajamas, wherever you are and whoever you're with this morning, I pray that you will be able to experience the presence of Jesus come to meet you right where you are. I'm so thankful that you've decided to join us today in this online worship experience. And I pray that God will bless you tremendously. Let's get started. Good morning, everybody. Let's worship together. everyone just wanted to say good morning wanted to say thank you for all the prayers and please know that I am praying for you all every day and I miss you I just wanted to share a little bit about how good God has been to me while all this is going on my family has been safe and I'm very thankful for that I've had more time to uh, play with my crocheting and my piano and reading my Bible and worshiping God and listening to my music. And I am just very thankful 
uh, that God is in control of all of this. I have a quick little question uh, I've been really concerned about in the Bible. Um, I've often wondered about what kind of man Boaz was before he married. I finally found the answer. He was ruthless. <laughs> Just a little joke to make everyone laugh. I hope you guys are all staying safe. I hope you're having a great day. Just know that in this time um, that God is still in control and that he loves us and he will see us through, that this is not our home, uh, that we will be at home in heaven. And I just want to say praise the Lord for everything that he's done for us. And I can't wait to see you all again. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn, our sins they are many. Love could remember no wrongs we've done. What love could remember no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all knowing, he counts not their sum. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. What patience would wait as we constantly roam, what Father so tender is calling us home. He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. Praise the Lord. His mercy is of kindness he lavished on us his blood was the payment his life was the cost we stood neath the debt we could never afford our sins they are many his mercy is more praise the Lord Good morning, Oasis Church family. Just touching base with everybody and see how y'all are holding up through this. I miss you all so much and miss our time to worship together on Sunday mornings. Through this, I've been spending a lot of time out in nature. Um, for those of you who know me, that's, that's not a, a big stretch of the imagination. I've been really focusing on 
we're we're all confused we're all worried about this situation but it doesn't change the fact that god is sovereign and that this is his creation his world that we all live in so we need to remember that in the psalms in the 24th psalm um david says the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof the world and those who dwell therein he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers so that, that's quite comforting just to, to remember his sovereignty, even in a stressful time for all of us. I can't wait till we all are able to get back together and resume our normal you know, Sunday morning stuff. And in the meantime, if you guys need anything, reach out to me and I'll do everything I can to help. Bye. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. Worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. here working in this place I worship you I worship you you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my God that is who you Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship Sing this, this uh, beautiful line right here. 
because this might be the way that many of you are feeling right now. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is. Hope everyone's doing well. Miss you guys. Um, the way that God's been working in my life uh, has been helping me get to know Him uh, through His creation. Uh, Romans 1, 19 and 20 say, For His divine nature and eternal power have been perceived ever since creation and the things that He's, been, that he's made. So whether it be a sunset or a beautiful hike, uh, he's, he's led me to get to know Him more uh, through the things that He's created. Uh, and it's created a new av uh, avenue of worship uh, for me, and uh, I suggest everyone um, get outside a little more, of course, social distancing, um, and get to see his creation more because it's, it's helped me out through this time for sure. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. No point of reference You spoke to the dark Fleshed out the wonder of light And as you speak A hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath planets form If the stars were made to worship so will I I can see your heart in everything you've made Every burning star a signal fire of grace The creation sings your praise is so alive God of your promise you don't speak in vain no syllable empty your voice for once you have spoken 
nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath. Here we are again, week seven of online church and the seventh week in a row that I have talked to a camera about the scriptures. <laughs> but I know that I'm not just talking to a camera. I know that on the other side of this, there are people who are 
paying attention and you're listening and you're watching and maybe you're going back and you're listening again and maybe you're clicking the like button or the comment section underneath and you're and you're sharing some of your own thoughts or maybe you're clicking share and then that's getting passed on to some of your family members and friends who live outside of our location here in southeastern Ohio and we just have no idea what God is doing with these online church services but even still as 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 cool and as techy and and as as 2020 as that sounds it's still lonely <laughs> and it's still uh it's still me standing here by myself. And uh, it's you sitting with one or two other people or maybe by yourself right now. And I know that that is wearing on a lot of people. And I just wanna tell you this. And one of the reasons why we decided to put the service together in the way that we're doing it today is to remind you that you are not alone. You are never alone. This thing that we have called fellowship, Christian fellowship, the sharing in or the participation that is unique to our relationship with other believers. And I'm not just talking about the other believers that come to Oasis Church on Sunday morning. I'm talking about other believers everywhere, hundreds of believers, people who are claiming that they love and follow Jesus as well. You have fellowship with those people. But we t when we talk about fellowship, what we're referring to is this. We're referring to the shared union, the shared participation that we have that is twofold. We have together with one another, and it wouldn't be fellowship if it were not participation with Christ. You know, the Apostle Paul says in one of his letters to one of the churches that he planted, this is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, he says this. He said, you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And just when you take that, just that little statement, it probably means both. It probably means two things when we think about fellowship that we're sharing vertically in the union that each one of us has with Christ. So you always have fellowship, even when you're sitting alone right now, you have fellowship with Jesus because Jesus promises you that he will always be with you, that you will never be alone. And so that's one of the beauties of fellowship. But it's twofold. And the second thing that Paul is referring to there when he says that we are called into the fellowship of his son is the sharing together of with other believers in this common union that we have with Christ and with each other. That sharing together in the Father and the Son and in the Holy Spirit and with one another is certainly the case that is talked about in 1 John chapter 1, verse 3. This is John the Apostle, and he wrote these words. He said, That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, that you may share, so this is me paraphrasing here, that you may share in what we've seen and heard. That, that when we share with one another about what we've seen and heard, what we've experienced in Christ, that is fellowship that we have with one another. And then he says this, and indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. So, the point is, when you share with us in the realities that we have seen and heard, or that you have seen and heard being with Christ, specifically those realities of Jesus, the realities of the things that Jesus is doing in your life, when you share not only with us, when you share those things, you share not only with us, but you share with us in the fellowship that you also have with the Father and with the Son. I know I'm being confusing here. It's kind of a tongue twister a little bit, but this is the heart of fellowship, and this is what I want to talk about today, and it's why I wanted to try to do the best we could through technology to create the fellowship that we're so used to on Sunday mornings. This demonstration of Christian fellowship that the Bible talks about, koinonia, is so vast. It can mean so many things. I mean, right now, Christian fellowship can be as simple as just you smiling at somebody through a Zoom meeting. 
or talking to a roommate maybe that you are no longer with at, uh, at college and saying, hey, you know, this week's finals week, you're going to survive these finals. You're going to be just fine. That encouraging word can be defined as fellowship. Or a word that you might give to a friend that, or a family member that you just beat in a game of dominoes for the fifth time in a row. You know, you could say, hey, you know what? I think maybe God made you to teach, but he made me to play dominoes. And you say something simple like that. But anything that's encouraged, those kinds of words, th this is Christian fellowship. It's sharing in the realities in which we are living right now, all the time, with Christ. Because you are always living with Christ, because he is always with you, that means that you have fellowship with him constantly, but all the realities in which you are living now, all the things that you're experiencing, is part of your fellowship. And when you share your own personal realities with other people, you are sharing in this thing we have called fellowship. You know, I think one of the greatest passages of Scripture that we, that we have in our Bibles to help us understand the value of Christian fellowship and what it means for us is in the book of Hebrews. It's just a phenomenal book. In Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, the writer of Hebrews says this. He says, Take care. Take care, brothers, lest there be any of you, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. When I think of fellowship, I think of responsibility. <laughs> and maybe that's just because I like to think about, okay, what's my responsibility here? What do I need to do? And fellowship Get, it come with what something that comes with fellowship is is a responsibility. We have a responsibility in Christian fellowship to do two things, according to the Hebrew writer: take care and exhort one another every day. Take care of one another and exhort one another every day. This is specifically verse verse thirteen in that section of scripture that we read. Exhort one another every day, while there is still a day, while today is still called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Hmm. Whoa, wait a minute. There's a purpose behind fellowship. There's a deep purpose. There's an eternal purpose behind this thing that we call fellowship. You are God's appointed means to keep the deceitfulness of sin from happening to your brother or your sister in Christ. Do you realize that? The heart, at the heart of fellowship, is this responsibility that God has placed on each one of us to help keep the deceitfulness of sin from creeping into our brothers' and sisters' lives. And how do we do that? I mean, that's, that's one of the great challenges of, of, of in, on your life as a Christian, to all of you, to all of us, to exhort one another to say things, to literally say things that will help keep one another believing. I mean, that's as simple as we can put it to say things to help keep me believing and to keep me strong. That's my goal. To, that's your goal for me, and that's my goal for you. That is the simplest way to put it. This is the calling of what we call Christian fellowship in all of its forms. Christian friendships exist for you to say things that will keep those friends believing in Jesus. Small group Bible studies, if you have them, exist for this to say things that will keep other people believing. Campus ministries exist for this, to say things that will keep each other believing. Christian organizations of any kind exist to say things that will keep each other believing. Marriages, Christian marriages exist for this, to say things that will keep each other believing. Local churches, Whatever the name of your local church is, if you're watching this today and you're not part of Oasis, whether you're part of Oasis or part of another local church, the local church exists for this, to say things that will keep each other believing. That's fellowship. You know, I know that 90% of our exchanges that we have with people are not exchanges that are in the midst of crisis, thankfully, right? And so we got to think of 
of just those little moments that we have to just share something that might seem insignificant, but it's so powerful. Every one, every one of our interchanges between one another as Christians count for all eternity. Do you realize that? In everything you say to another Christian, you are either weakening people's affections for God or you're strengthening people's affections for God. Pause and consider what you say. You're either building someone up toward heaven or you're tearing them down toward hell. Which is probably why Paul said in Ephesians, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such that is good for building up as it fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear it. Every sermon, every conversation, every interchange, email, text, comments under a social media page is a means of you working out your salvation like we talked about last week. There are no meaningless moments in your life. If you are in Christ, there are no meaningless moments. Everything you say and do is awesomely meaningful every moment of your day. Please take that to heart. Please understand that, that we are still, even in the seventh week of isolation, we are still in fellowship with one another. So this is why I have asked several of you to share just a brief video of yourself saying hi to the fellowship of believers and perhaps just something else that God is teaching you during this time when we're unable to be together in the same room. Just because we can't be in the same room does not mean that we cease to have fellowship. So, church, let's fellowship with one another today. Let me pray, and then we're going to continue to fellowship. God, thank you so much for the truth of your word. Thank you for the times when it's hard to understand and the times when it's easy to understand. And God, I think that when we look at just the simple word today of what it means to have fellowship, what Paul told us when he said that when we share in, 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 in we share with in the realities of Christ and we share in the realities that we are experiencing every day, both vertically and horizontally, that's what fellowship looks like. I don't think that's that hard to understand. And so I pray that today that you would make this very real to every person who is hearing it and that you will help us to know that with everything we say, with everything we type, with everything that we chat about, with every, every <laughs> Zoom call, with every uh, you know, TikTok we make, everything that we're using to communicate, we're either building someone up toward heaven or we're tearing them down toward hell. May we know the significance of all of our words, of all of our actions for this thing that we call fellowship. May we have today a much greater appreciation and understanding and love for Christian fellowship. I know that you're building that in us. I know that is one of the outcomes that is going to be experienced from this time that we are walking through today. This isolation from one another due to this virus. And so God, I'm saying to you right now, with the fellowship of my brothers and sisters, thank you. Thank you that what may have been given to the world try to seek and destroy, to seek and to steal, to kill and destroy us. You are turning and using it for your good purpose, just like you do with everything. May people know that that is your plan, God. For someone that may not know that that's your plan, may they know today that that is your plan. Open doors for Christians all over the world who understand this to be able to explain and share the heart 
behind following Jesus, the heart behind loving God and serving your purpose. Give us that opportunity, Lord. May the floodgates open for your grace and your mercy and your love to go out from here. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, Hi Oasis Church. Church. We've really missed seeing you guys, and we've missed being together, and hopefully we will get together in a week or two. Well, probably not, but we <laughs> Wishful thinking, Wishful. but anyway, yeah. Um, we, we really do miss you, but we really appreciate the fact that we're able to, through technology, um, worship through song and, and the message that Chris has been bringing. It's been a real blessing, and, and I've noticed a lot of people who um, aren't actually Oasis Church family that have been joining in, and I, I hope that they've been blessed too. Uh, and they're always welcome to come when we're finally able to get back together again and meet. Um, one of the things that we've been doing on Sundays after our <laughs> the message is we have dinner together, the three of us, and then we take real long car rides <clears throat> every Sunday out in the country usually. We've been to West Virginia where Mom grew up and some of the places I remember as a child. And we went last week, or a couple weeks ago, up to the hill where Mike grew up. And uh, it's just been nice to be able to take time to do those kind of things. And also, a lot of you know uh, that I'm not really a person that likes to uh, play games or cards or anything like that. Whenever the family gets together, usually I'm in the living room sitting while they're playing cards. But uh, uh, I also, uh, they have me uh, playing Skippo, so, and I, they won't admit it, but I have won a couple games, <laughs> and, uh, but I, I ha have enjoyed it, and also I always enjoy going outside when it's not raining, I enjoy going outside and uh, doing some yard work or, or landscaping or whatever, but uh, uh, just, uh, it's just been a real blessing to be able to, uh, even though the church is not together, we're you know, being able to uh, watch everybody online each week, and we really uh, miss you guys a lot, and can't wait to get back together. Bye. 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 We love you. Love you. Love you. Hello, everyone. Um, hope you all are healthy and safe. Uh, I am in Athens, and fortunately for me and my family, we are uh, happy, safe, and healthy, just missing each other like crazy. Um, for some of you, you might know that for the last couple of months, I've been training for Pro Day, uh, which got canceled. Um, so there's been a lot of uncertainty for me. And uh, finally, this weekend uh, is the NFL draft. And I'm really looking forward to finding out kind of the answers that I've been looking forward to um, really for a, much longer than the beginning of this year. But definitely I've been working towards something um, for a long time. And now I get to understand or it's going to be unveiled to me. And I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but there's been a lot of uncertainty, but I think that this season of my life and this unseason, this season for everyone has been an opportunity to just kind of trust God. I know that he's really used this time where I've, there's been, I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Now I don't know if I'm going to be able to see, the next time I'm going to see my family. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty with so many different things in my life that it's such a great opportunity to wake up and just kind of put all of my trust in, into him. The, the, the things that I want to know the, the feeling that I'm in control, I have to wake up daily and surrender that to him. And so that's how we, what he's kind of been working in my life and how um, I've had to uh, really kind of grow during this season. I'm really fortunate for that. I think that I'll be able to look back on this part of my life um, and, and really be thankful for the way that he's used these unforeseen circumstances in a positive way. Hope that I, it's okay that I share some scripture, um, but it's from Isaiah 55, 9, and it says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. It's a scripture um, th that the Lord is declaring um, to the prophet Isaiah. And um, that, that, that one part, so are my ways higher than your ways, I think right now there, there would have been a, a very easy way for me to have pictured everything unfolding. Um, I would have been able to go home right after Pro Day. Pro Day would have happened. Um, I would have had been able to put up great numbers. And yet, uh, that is not the case. Things have not gone the way that I wanted them to. But I trust um, that, uh, that his ways are higher than my ways. 
and all of this is going to be turning out for his glory. Um, and whether that means I'm going to be able to accomplish the things that I want to accomplish um, every single day, that's a struggle for me is trying to put in those things aside and saying, God, this is, this is for you. This is the, the reason that I'm doing all these things is for your glory. And so I, I'm hoping that every single day I can just learn and, and grow in my relationship with Jesus, um, trusting that his ways are higher than mine morning everyone it's melissa and chris asked me to say a few things well, actually asked the whole family um but if you know my family you know why they declined um but i just wanted to say a few things today about everything that's been going on and how it's changed and affected our lives um i do work in healthcare, and um so it was set up from the beginning that we were going to start to work from home um but within a couple of days that that situation had changed and that we were going to be working more in the hospital. And so I went through the crying fit, I went through breaking down, and then I went into fight or flight mode and decided I would make the very, very best of it and do the best I can with my patients because they are not getting any visitors at all right now. So they feel like they're by themselves. Um, so really great things have come um, from this and, and um, I think when God gives us lemons, we should make lemonade. And so I've really looked at the positive of things. So for Brian and I and the girls, our life is very busy, very fast. I coach competitive cheer. I'm always involved with the church. You know, I'm involved with our family and friends, and I never tell anyone no. And so I haven't had to do that because we've been staying home a lot. And um, one of my favorite things and I do miss everyone at church, um, but one of my favorite things is that um, I can watch almost five church services in the morning and see all the ones that used to come to Oasis and that have branched out and went other churches. Um, I have been able to just kind of differently wrote at, can kind of connect with people um, more than I would have prior, um, and I think it's just because we're at a homebound state. So when I'm not working, I'm here working at home. Um, Brian is still working. He wants you to know he is essential. He wanted to make sure I added that in. Um, but I think it's a great time for us to focus and think outside the box when this world is so commercialized and, and really not focusing on God and really going beyond what we should be doing, more focusing on his word. And I think this is a time for us to really watch him bring our family family, the church family, back together. So I hope everyone is doing well. Can't wait to see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. I hope you're healthy and safe and making the most out of this quarantine time that we're all in right now. I'm currently back home in Iowa. Uh, obviously, the school year got cut short, so I wasn't able to finish it out in Athens, but I'm back home living with my parents and my little brother, and it's been a real blessing to be able to share meals and conversation and get that time together that we haven't had in a couple of years. I also am working my way through online school, which has been interesting having to navigate photojournalism and storytelling and all of that when I can't really leave my house. But it's been a challenge that I've enjoyed and I'm really enjoying getting to tell people stories and talk about this quarantine in a creative way during this time. The summer is a little bit unknown for me. Uh, I was planning to have an internship, but it's looking like it might be canceled. So that's a little hard, but I know that it's all gonna work out. During this time, I have really been able to find a lot of uninterrupted time to read my Bible and get into God's word, listening to podcasts. And it's been really nice to have a clear schedule to be able to do that and not worry about things and not have to feel rushed or anything. I think it's so important to remember that we have such a good, good God and he has this plan for our life, and for everybody's life, and that whatever happens, whatever comes out of this, it's gonna be okay and God is looking out for us. I hope you guys are all doing well and I can't wait to see you all again soon. Bye. Hi everybody at Oasis Church, this is Dave. Um, just checking in, making sure everybody's doing good. Um, doing all right I'm a little bit bored but uh, I'm working a couple days a work a week for the Athens City Schools bagging lunches for the kids in the Athens City School District so I do that a couple days a week to try to keep myself busy I miss everybody I look forward to coming back to church 
I hope everybody's staying healthy and staying inside, and hopefully we can get through this thing. I'll see everybody real soon. Take care. Hey everyone, I hope you are staying healthy and busy during this unprecedented time. I miss you all so very much, um, but I'm so thankful that we still get to come together on Sundays virtually. Um, however, nothing beats seeing you guys in person, um, walking in church, smelling the coffee, and Sharon, I miss your baked goods. Um, I have been quarantining in Athens and I have been working remotely. Um, many of you know my work takes me all over the United States. However, I am not traveling right now. Um, I'm doing a lot of outreach, talking to families um, and incoming students. And that has actually provided me with a really unique opportunity to hear how um, people all around the United States have been impacted and are coping with COVID-19. Um, and through those conversations, I have been able to take away kind of three main points. Um, the first one being that I am so lucky that I am healthy and that my friends and family around me have also been able to stay healthy. Um, number two, I am so thankful that I have a job right now and that I have not been impacted um, too harshly by COVID-19. Um, and number three, I am so thankful that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Um, I cannot imagine getting through this time um, without him. Um, speaking of which, I really feel like I have needed um, this forced downtime. Um, it's really um, allowed me to recenter and reflect um, and pour my absolute heart into designing and focusing on uh, my future design career. On the flip side, I am struggling just like everyone else. Um, I really get my energy and my cup filled by being around friends and family. And with that not being an option right now, um, that's definitely been hard. Um, as someone who loves to hug and embrace others, and um, physical connection right now is seen as um, something to be feared. So that's been something that I've been praying about um, and working through. But there's an amazing book called the Bible. If you haven't read it, I suggest you do. It has a lot of words of wisdom and a lot of stories about getting through hard times. And there is one piece of scripture that has really been helping me, Psalms 9, 9 through 10, and it says, the Lord is a shelter for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. I hope this reminds you that our God is a loving God. Um, he does not make mistakes. And have some holy confidence that there is a silver lining in this season of life. Um, that is all I have for now. I cannot wait to meet with you guys again. Um, but until that day comes, take care and we'll see you then. Hey Oasis, it's Cole Erlin. I am currently in Ashland, Nebraska. I'm healthy, I'm safe. My family is healthy and safe too. So I'm feeling very blessed about that. That's really important to me in such a crazy time that we're all staying safe and healthy. I do have older parents, so I'm trying my best to keep them healthy. Uh, but, you know, this is just a weird, weird time. And uh, it's not easy for a lot of people. I, I, I'm kind of thankful that I'm an introvert in times like these because it's definitely a little easier for me, but I recognize that it's not as easy for a lot of people. Uh, so with the Lord in my life, I've been trying to reach out to people, do my best to do stuff like that, which I'm not very good at. So I've just been making a conscious effort of trying to text people and reach out and let people know that I care about them because in a time of isolation, it, it can be very, very dark, very lonely and stuff like that, um, which is why I just feel incredibly blessed to be able to be home right now. Um, but on the flip side of that, I can't wait to be back in Athens worshiping with you guys. Uh, I miss all of you. I miss my Oasis family so much. Chris's songs, the sermons, all of that, the community. You guys are really important to me. So I, I hope you guys are doing well. I miss you guys and I can't wait to be back in Athens. Hey guys, Hello. this is Ashley and Brett in Ashland, Nebraska, um, 13 hours away from Athens, Ohio. So we are far from you guys right now, but uh, we just wanted to share some encouragement with you guys and let you know what we've been up to here in Nebraska. Um, obviously, as a newly married couple, it's a little bit unorthodox to be bouncing from our parents' homes and staying with siblings. So 
Um, it's been an interesting time, but it's also been a really encouraging time to be able to see family that we don't normally get to see. Um, we obviously um, get to spend a lot more time with people who we didn't think we'd be spending time with, so that's a really fun thing. And also with um, just encouraging people um, in the high schools locally, Ashley was able to speak with the local SCA um, and just share her testimony and encourage those young students um, who are about to enter college. And, Cole and I are also fortunate enough to be able to speak with those kids as well to hopefully share some knowledge on um, just the gospel and some fundamental things in the faith. So that's a little bit of uh, stuff we've been up to. Yeah, and I would say God's really working um, in the ways that might seem like burdens right now. I've been able to connect with, um, like Brett said, some local seniors who are going through the same um, battles and struggles that I'm going through as a senior. Um, however, they have some things that can't be replaced. And so it's been really cool to have that dialogue with them. And even um, people I ran with who are seniors and lost their final track season and um, first year teachers who have not been in contact with their kiddos um, and students. So it's been really cool to um, be able to connect with the wide audience and uh, believers, non-believers like to really talk about what our hope is in this time and how we're all gonna get through this together. But um, yeah, I've been really encouraged through a lot of extra quiet time, um, time aside with um, people from our Puerto Rico trip to really study Genesis right now, um, have joined a uh, women's ministry Bible study and we're going through James again it's just been really good to slow down and uh, take the time and really make the most of it here we miss you guys hope miss to you. see you soon yep, hope we see you guys soon well hello Oasis friends this is what a lot of my daytimes look like when the sky is this blue at least get a couple of hours outside just to enjoy some exercise and what God has given us in terms of nature I just want to say that we certainly appreciate the support, the generosity, and the, the financial sacrifice that many of you make to provide for Oasis Church. And we don't have a lot of expenses and a lot of needs in terms of that. We've always tried to keep things really simple, but we do uh, have some operating expenses and we do have things that we like to try to keep on top of uh, financially. And so I just want to say that if you have been gathering up your regular offering, your regular giving that uh, God has placed on your own heart um, at some point in time uh, to give to uh, the church. If that is, if that commitment is something that you have made to Oasis Church, uh, then you can feel free to send that um, through the mail if you'd like. We've actually received a few uh, tithing checks uh, through the mail. Uh, we set up a PayPal account for that as well, uh, but I'm going to tell you that if you are more comfortable mailing it, uh, you can do that. And you can actually mail it to our address. Um, we get church mail at our address a lot. Obviously, we don't have a building or an office. And so you can mail it to 60 Newrad Road. That's N-U-R-A-D Road at Athens, and that's Athens, Ohio, 45701. And you could actually put Oasis Church on that and uh, our mailman knows that we receive Oasis Church mail. And we'll make sure that that gets deposited and, and used for the ministry of Oasis and used for mercy ministry, used for um, helping to supplement even support of, of uh, my family, which we always have appreciated, and uh, all the uh, other things that God might bring to us that he wants us to do um, with that funding. And so, again, thank you so much. It's been such an awesome thing to be able to get connected with you uh, with you all through technology and we certainly miss being together in person and just cannot wait to be able to give you hugs again. <laughs> God bless you guys. All right, it's been really great to worship with you today, to hear, um, to hear from everyone that sent videos to us so we could splice them into today's worship service and uh, I know that we're missing each other like crazy, and that's why I wanted to kind of mix things up this week to let you see some other faces and hear some testimonies of, of from other people about how they're doing. And um, I hope that it encourages you and blesses you, and and really I hope it strengthens you for uh, your your own personal walk as we move on into a new week. And uh, so let's uh, let's let's sing one more together. Let's celebrate together of uh, the goodness of God. I 
Thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for ministering to our hearts and our minds today, our spirits, and giving us the encouragement that we need. And you know exactly what every person needs who's watching this right now, Lord. 
and I am so thankful that you just meet us right where um, we, we need you to meet us. And I'm thankful that you're doing that right now. Just continue to do that today, God, as we walk with you, as we seek to live in your ways, as we seek to just find peace today. May it just be being with you one-on-one -on -one somewhere. Um, maybe it just is in the stillness. Maybe it's in your word. Maybe it's through prayer. Maybe it's through a, a phone call that we give to somebody today. Whatever it might be, Lord, meet us. Draw near to us today, God. We love you. We thank you for the ways that you work in our lives. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.